Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. Welcome to this Power Up webinar, taking a look at an effects cookbook for Motion 5. Motion scares a lot of people because it does so much. What I want to do today is not only show you some effects that you can use in your own projects, but show you techniques that you can use to make your motion effects look interesting and yet not require months of research on your part. There are many things we can do in motion that we can't do in Final Cut Pro 10. So today I want to showcase a variety of easy to create effects that you can use in your own projects. You need to think of today as more of a cookbook with both complete recipes and, <laughs> and lots of techniques as well. My goals for today were to create effects that we can't create in Final Cut Pro 10. Create effects that are visually interesting, that don't require major design skills, that can be constructed in 10 minutes or less, that use tools and techniques we can apply to other projects, and that use existing elements where possible. If you're new to Motion, be sure to watch one of these two webinars to learn how the program works, either Webinar 57, which is an introduction to Motion 5, or Webinar 94 on creating cool effects in Motion 5. Both of these will help you better understand how the program works. I'm going to sort of jump into the middle. So the demos that I want to do today start with ornamenting a video clip. Then we'll motion track one object on another. Then we'll motion track and modify a particle system. We'll create an unusual green screen effect, create an animated lower third from a Photoshop graphic, and create a 3D object from a Photoshop file. Let's start by motion tracking an object placed on top of moving video. So let's add our video first, and to do that, we're going to just simply grab our, our little runner and click Import. And again, it's too big. Highlight the video, go to the inspector, go to properties, and change this to 68%. And now we can see our video fill the frame. Spacebar to play. Again, we're seeing it play essentially real time, so we're OK for speed. I want to add something. Now, we could add text. I could add another piece of video. It, in my case, I'm going to add a shape. Everything is stored inside the library. There's more than 5,000 pieces of art that we can work with in the library. Click the Shapes category and scroll down, and there is a pink heart. I click on it once so it shows up inside the preview window. I make sure my playhead is at the very beginning of the timeline. Click the Apply button, and there's our heart. We could put this anywhere but I'm going to put it right on our jacket. Hold the Shift key down, hold the Option key down, grab a corner. Option allows you to scale from the center. The Shift key constrains it so it remains heart-shaped and not something else. And we'll put it right about there. I want to add a little bit of a drop shadow effect. So again, we go back to the Inspector and go to the Properties panel. And notice there's a drop shadow setting under Properties. Click Show. We'll make the drop shadow a little bit darker, set it to, say, 95%. We'll make it a little bit blurrier and a little bit more distance. And we now have a drop shadow on our heart. So let's put that right about there. When you're doing motion tracking, you're moving a foreground object based upon how something in the background video is changing. When you are doing motion tracking, you want to find something in the background that remains in the frame the entire time. For instance, let me just hide the heart. Press F5 to show the layer panel. Uncheck the heart. It makes it disappear. It's still in place. It's still sized. It's just not visible. I could motion track off this corner of her jacket. It's clearly defined. There's a good contrast and good color difference between those two points. But the problem is, as she runs, her hand goes up and blocks the corner. At that instant, I lose the motion track. I could perhaps do something off the front of her jacket, except there's not enough contrast. I'd lose it, and her hands keep blocking it. The best place i found to do motion tracking is the corner of her eye, which is a nice contrast between her eye and her skin, and her face is in frame the whole time. And because I want to keep this simple, I'm going to just set the play range, Option, Command, O. So we just look at the beginning of this effect. And the reason is, once you see how this works for a little bit of it, it's the exact same. It just takes a little bit more time to analyze. So turn the heart back on and make sure the heart is selected. There we go.
The motion track effect is always applied to the foreground clip. Because we're moving something, we go to the Behavior button, and there's Motion Tracking, and we apply the Match Move feature. Match Move allows us to move a foreground based upon how something in the background is moving. Press the F7 key to reveal the HUD, and notice that it has already filled in the background video into the source. In the event this is empty, say you've got multiple pieces of video on your project at once, grab the icon from the Layers panel and drag it into here. You can't grab it from the timeline, you can't grab it from the viewer, you can't grab the name, you must grab the actual icon and drag it in. If you've only got two pieces of video, it will put the appropriate one in, and if you have more than that, you'll need to drag it. We can motion track based upon three factors. Position, which means horizontal and vertical. Scale, which means zooming in. And rotation, which means you're rotating on an axis. In this particular case, I don't have to worry about rotation or scale. But if I did, if I clicked on it, it would automatically add a second point. We'll turn that back off again. I just want to analyze based upon a single motion track point, which is right here in the center of the heart. To keep us from getting confused, notice that both those motion track points are there. I'm going to just delete that filter, select the heart, go to the behaviors, motion tracking, match move, show the HUD, F7. Notice it's filled in the background. I want to analyze just on position. I'm going to grab this dot and drag it up. And notice on the left-hand side in the inspector is an enlarged view of what we're working with here. And I can find exactly that corner in her eye, which has got good contrast, sharp edges, and we can now lock to that. Then you click the Analyze button, and it goes through on a frame-by-frame -frame basis and tracks how the corner of her eye changes from one frame to the other, and it's building out this motion path here. I'll close the HUD to hide it, hit the Home key, and watch what happens as I play this back. <laughs> We've now motion tracked the heart on top of her jacket tracked against her eye. Now we could, for instance, if I had something on her jacket that wasn't blocked by her gloves, I'd probably get a better track by tracking off the jacket. The motion point that you're analyzing, that you're tracking, needs to be contrasty, needs to have well-defined edges, needs to have a little bit difference in color because the software needs to be able to follow that as it moves around the frame tracking on a vague piece of white here in the snow isn't doable. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar, an effects cookbook looking at Motion 5. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz slash store and look for Webinar 106. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all of our videos for one low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 600 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers both Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. Thanks.